So continuing on with the changes, we're doing the British forces, starting out with infantry sections. And they're getting quite a lot of changes. So the accuracy is going up, but the damage is going down. The overall impact of this should be they have the exact same amount of DPS, but they'll be less likely to like instantly knock off a model from a squad. So it should mean, you know, maybe you'll be able to win an engagement against them once in a while. <laughs> Also, a change here, the received accuracy is going up from 0.8 to 0.9, but then that's being added back in in the form of the cover bonus. So Tommy's fighting out of cover now will be worse. They'll be taking more damage from small arms fire, but in cover should be exactly the same. Don't worry about this affecting the assault Tommy upgrade because that uh, doesn't worry about the cover bonus. And also a change to pyrotechnic supplies. The sight range that they're giving is now switching down from 50 to 42 because stacked up with the uh, sight bonus that sections get when in cover, this was giving like an insane amount of sight, made it very hard to outmaneuver these sections. So yeah, quite a lot of changes to Tommy's. Overall, a bit of a nerf, especially for the outer cover performance. But, you know, they are kind of dominating the game. Very, very hard to defeat five men in three sections. So, overall, not too much of a nerf, though. You know, as long as you're fighting from cover, you shouldn't really feel these impacts too much. So, now we're going to do four man sections out of cover versus Grandier's long range. This is something you might run into quite frequently in the early game. So, important to see how these shake out. So, I have uh, three engagements going on across the map, but we'll focus on one. Check the results of the other. Okay, looks like Tommy's pulling ahead in this one. Check on the others. Okay, very strong win for the Tommies in this one. And then uh, close to even on this one. So yeah, it does look like Tommy's are still going to have a uh, pretty decent edge against Grandia's long range, even fighting from out of cover in the early game. So interesting to uh, see these changes there. The squad's gone. Moving on to the Vickers now, suppression is going up slightly. So hopefully this will make it a little bit more attractive to use. Doesn't get used currently too much because you know Tommy's are so good. So not much point in even building Vickers, and its suppression is a little bit lackluster. But hopefully this will push it over the edge, and maybe we'll see some players start to use it again now the sniper is being changed saying here that the aim time has been standardized to match other snipers to make the british sniper less frustrating to use you all knew it took so long to get a shot off made it very hard to use in counter snipe scenarios so now that should be uh, alleviated should be much more responsive over the rate of fire between shots it remains slower than other snipers as intended because it does have the bonuses where it can actually shoot at like vehicles and whatnot, so it would be a little bit unfair if it was just like just as good against infantry and still having that anti-tank component. A few changes there to the sniper. So testing these snipers, who's going to shoot first? You can see here we'll drag them towards each other, make sure they're facing up. And then we'll choose the red sniper to become the enemy. Who's going to shoot first? Okay, so this time it was the Osseer Sniper. Now we'll switch the Osseer Sniper to the enemy. This time the British Sniper wins. See, the aim times do look to be the same. Seems to be whichever one I switch to become the enemy ends up losing the duel. So, uh, yeah, it looks like the 55 cal Sniper will be able to hold its own in counter snipe wars now. Quite a few changes to the Comet here, it hasn't really been seen too much use as of late, especially after it got its moving accuracy nerfed from 0.75 to 0.5, so we'll see how it goes here. We've got the manpower cost going down from 500 to 480, so kind of similar to the Panther really. I think the Panther's 490, isn't it? So it's just a very small tickle to the manpower there. But its AoE is being reworked, kind of similar to the heavy tank reworks. The scatter is going down, so it's going to be more accurate when shooting at infantry hitting them more often and you know if it misses tanks maybe it'll 
land on the scatter roll as well. So when it comes to AOE, similar changes to the heavy tanks. AOE uh, near is going down. Same with the uh, near distance, that's also going down. But the far AOE is going up. So it should just more consistently do damage to squads between the scatter and the AOE changes. Now it gets an extra vet bonus of vet 3 of 20% uh, reload time. So it's a really nice change for the Comet, which tended to have more utility based veterancy rather than outright stats, which led it to scale not so good in the late game once it got to that high level of veterancy. And now has heavy crush. So similar to the Panther, we'll be able to go through those uh, big hedgerows and trees and whatnot. So make it a little bit more maneuverable in that department, similar to the Panther. So yeah, quite a few changes to the Comet here overall, and I hope we get to see a little bit more use of it. So here we have the Comet long range against a squad of Fox Grenadiers. See how those scatter and AOE changes pan out. Pretty good start. This is uh, on that second shot. Okay, pretty good connection. Seems like the machine gun was in range of one of those models, so a bit of damage on. And then another miss there. Decent connection. It doesn't seem to be as good as like the heavy tanks we're seeing, like the Tiger and whatnot, but I suppose it is cheaper, non-doctrinal, so it does make sense. Where do you want this but you know, it does seem decent, you know, that's pretty long range. Is that squad? So yeah, that's the revised comet at long range. Cromwell. Slight buffs here. Acceleration is going from 2.6 to 3, and target size is going down from 22 to 20. So it'll be harder to hit and it'll uh, accelerate faster wasn't really the Cromwell changes I was hoping for. I was hoping for a slight buff to its machine gun. Obviously, so it's slightly better at chasing squads down on retreat because its machine guns are terrible compared to every other medium tank. But we'll have to see how these play out. feels like this target size change is maybe just going to make it more frustrating to play against. You're just going to miss shots on it more often. Just playing against it will feel more frustrating, whereas you can't really rely on this target size change on these misses offensively. Not really too much of a fan of these Cromwell changes, but it does need a little bit of a buff because compared to most other medium tanks, it is underperforming. The Firefly is receiving a slight buff. The fuel cost is going down from 155 to 145, so it's going to be the same cost as the new Jackson fuel cost. So, and you know, it's pretty similar in performance to the Jackson, so I'd say decreasing the fuel cost to be around the same as a fair change. And the Dual rocket upgrade, not the rockets themselves, but the upgrade cost is going down from 50 to 30 to encourage players to use a little bit more often. Often at high level games, you don't even see players upgrade these, so maybe with this slight cost decrease, we'll see a little bit more of those dual rockets in action. The Churchill Mark 7, this is the standard one you get with Anvil Tech, not the Crocodile or the AVRE. You changes here. Population is going up from 16 to 19. Was at 18 in a previous version of the mod, but we all saw what happened. And the balance preview invitational still was very, very strong at 18, so going up to 19 now. Grenade ability is being moved from VET 0 to VET 1, so this will make it a little bit less effective right out the gate against things like anti tank guns and uh, team weapons, which you know generally you can drive up to and lob a grenade at pretty easily. And then the fuel cost is also going up from 160 to 165. So yeah, quite a few nerfs to the Churchill here. It's very, very hard to deal with with its high uh, health pool and pretty good armor as well, as well as good moving performance. I think it still has 0.75 accuracy on the move. So very good uh, moving performance as well. So a few nerfs here to the Churchill, well deserved, I would say. Changes to emplacements now. You will be able to use Royal Engineers to deconstruct emplacements. You will tear them down with Royal Engineers. It takes 15 seconds. And once complete, you'll get 100 manpower back for your trouble. So you'll be able to move your emplacements around. Uh, put in the wrong spot as the tide of the battle changes. But emplacements are getting nerfed in other areas. So I wasn't really too much of a fan of this. But 
they are getting uh, nerfed in other departments so maybe it will end out all right overall so we're taking a look at the deconstruct function on uh, emplacements here so we've got this icon down here tear down emplacement has a nice little shovel there in the ui click it on the emplacement and they go to work apparently this takes 15 seconds i've zeroed all the income so we should see exactly how much we get back in terms of resources so yep 100 manpower back so even though both wars cost fuel you don't get any fuel back just flat 100 manpower the churchill crocodile and aviary are both going behind the final stage of tech you require anvil or hammer and nine command points to call them in. A couple changes to the advanced emplacements commander. The forward assembly repair sapper range is going down from 30 to 20. So you have to build those forward assembly repair stations closer to your emplacements. They won't reach as far. The repair sappers should no longer instantly respawn if killed. That was a bug. So if they went into a crawling critical, they wouldn't instantly respawn. But if they didn't go into a crawling critical, they would instantly respawn. So that should be fixed now. The bug fix more than a change. And the advanced fortifications upgrade is switching from being 70 munitions to 100 manpower and 10 fuel. So this is the one that gives you bonus armor and does it give you bonus health as well? Can't remember exactly. But yeah, it's switching from munitions to uh, manpower and fuel now. And finally, changes to the Bofors here. Quite a lot of changes. AOE is going up from 1 to 1.5. However, rate of fire is being halved from 4 to 2. Reload time is going down from 1.5 slash 2 to 1. So we'll be reloading quick, more quickly. And reload frequency is going up from 1 to 2. So it should be reloading less often as well as more quickly. So should offset maybe some of these rate of fire nerfs up here suppression is going way up it's being uh, more than doubled so going to be a lot more effective at suppressing infantry maybe rather than outright killing them suppression radius is also going up by a pretty big chunk from 0.8 to 1 and aoe suppression is also going way up from 0.1 to 0.75 so it's going to be way way better at suppressing infantry all these changes massive changes to it in terms of suppression maybe like a slight nerf in terms of uh outright killing power and target suppress suppression multiplier from 0.5 to 1 don't really know what that is <laughs> so you're quite a few changes to both well, seems like it's going to be lowering the killing power and uh increasing the suppression we'll have to see how it plays out in testing so testing the bow force first off we're just going to run a squad into it from max range see what happens So it pins them quite quickly, but yeah, definitely nowhere near as lethal as well previously against infantry. Yeah, so not even close to as lethal as it was previously against infantry, but we'll pin them very, very quickly. So now we're going to send a blob at the bow force, see what its AoE suppression is like. So they have to be quite tightly spaced to get AOE suppressed. Certainly, you know, if you manually switch from squad to squad, you'll be able to suppress a blob quite quickly. So it's not really too big of an issue, but it will require some inputs on your behalf. And now, what was previously, every player's worst nightmare having to retreat past a bow force. See how that goes. Not. Okay, oof. So it seems to have trouble tracking them as they're coming and going, but if they bunch up close to it, it can get some huge hits in. But yeah, it doesn't seem to be nearly as scary against squads as they retreat past it. I imagine if the squad didn't run like right next to it, it may have done almost no damage at all. So we'll try the retreat test again, but this time the Bofors is a little bit further back. Oh, 
Hmm. So we had like a good burst around here where it did most of its damage, but it doesn't seem to be very consistent at all against squads on retreat. So now testing the new bow fours against vehicles. First we'll send in a 222 and afterwards we'll send in the Panzer IV. See how quickly it takes care of them. So I would say you could, you know, accidentally run into the bow forwards and then reposition, get out of the way if you're on top of your control. Whereas previously, you run into a bow force with a light vehicle like this, it's going to die instantly. You're going to have almost no time to react. And now the bow force against the Panzer IV. So whereas previously I think the Bofors was quite scary for medium tanks, the new Bofors is really going to struggle against something like a Panzer IV from the front. So yeah, that's a pretty big nerf to its performance against medium tanks, I would say. Bofors getting uh, quite a few nerfs here, especially in the uh, anti-vehicle department. Moving on to USF changes, starting out with the riflemen here. The, the air rifle, the M1 Garand. Near range is going from three to six. It also affects USF officers. As you can see here, this is a DPS chart. So the old line is the blue. That's the DPS as it drops off with range up to the max range. Then now the DPS stays at maximum all the way out to six range and then starts to drop off. So this is actually like a pretty big buff to riflemen. Makes it a lot easier to engage close range and you know in some scenarios even when you think you're really close range you're actually not within the uh, max damage range. So this should make just overall engagements a lot easier with riflemen. I'm playing against it, the patch has been out for a day now. Uh, you do seem to win a few engagements that you would have lost previously. You know in situations where riflemen end up closing the distance on you. Maybe it was like a 50-50 before maybe... You were going to outright win that engagement previously with these near changes you end up losing those engagements so this change is definitely noticeable it may look small but there's uh, quite a big buff to riflemen so these near changes might be a little bit tough to demonstrate but we'll give it a shot going to charge riflemen into fox reindeers from max range Moving out. Let's go. three times This last one. We just lost a unit. This one's going a little bit longer than the other ones. Looks like the other one's pretty handy win for the rifleman uh, on both occasions. This one going right down to the wire. Maybe this rifle squad is a little bit too far away now as well at this range. Close to uh, 10 range away, so maybe should charge it a little bit closer. But yeah, I mean, that's looking like a pretty bad scenario for false communities. If riflemen can charge into you from max range and then just outright win a fight like that, that is... It's going to be tough to use uh, Fox Grenadiers against Riflemen. Okay, so same test, but now Riflemen are going to be charging into uh, Grenadiers. Let's watch this one in the middle. Three models, four models, two models. So yeah, still a pretty handy win for the riflemen right across the board there. 
So now charging riflemen into Fox Greedy is behind light cover. See how this goes, see how this makes a difference. Rifleman end up winning that one. So we'll run that one back. Rifleman charging into Fox Creedies from long range. better this time it seems like their damage was kind of targeting one model at a time the fox screen is so they're kind of like shooting off one model shooting off one model then switching from model to model so this time they performed a lot better knocking out uh, one model at a time so a uh, narrow win there for the fox screen is so third time's the charm a rifleman charging in on fox screen is from max range so if we can draw some conclusions from the averages here Pulling ahead slightly. So, yeah, it does look like overall riflemen are going to have a slight edge charging into fault screeners that are behind light cover, and I find that a little bit troubling, honestly. It's going to make it very hard to position your folks, and now that they only cost 20 manpower less than riflemen, yeah, that is a little bit scary. Rifleman flares are also being changed. These are the flares in the Rifle Company Commander. The cost is going down from 40 to 35. Same cost as Panzer Fuse flares to try and incentivize their use a little bit. Maybe buff up Rifle Company. Reassurance are getting a slight change here as well. Their M1 carbine damage is going down from 10 to 8. But the accuracy is going up to compensate. So the overall DPS should be pretty similar. But you'll be at least at the mercy of just RNG accuracy rolls in the small arms firefights however this will make them slightly worse against things like light vehicles cool wagons and similar where those light vehicles have such big target sizes basically guaranteed to hit and that's where the high damage comes into play so we'll make them slightly worse against light vehicles but a lot more consistent in small arms firefights maybe even better outright better in small arms firefights did feel that they were better in testing but hard to tell for sure the Jackson, there have been quite a few complaints about it being too strong and just a very small nerf here going from 140 to 145 fuel. Jackson is very critical for US forces late game so don't want to make too big of a change but now you know it's going to be the same as Firefly. It's probably uh, a fair amount. Scott is also being changed. The auto fire reload is going up from these values to these values about 0.7 of a second more reload on the auto fire but the barrage is going down to compensate for that. Also the smoke barrage is going down slightly. So playing against the Skull was always tricky. Feel, it was like a big feels bad man moment where you just couldn't kill it. It can be very hard to kill especially once it gets the smoke at vet 1. So just a rework of it here trying to switch some of its strength from being on the auto fire to being on the barrage. Packouts is also receiving some changes. The auto fire scatter is being increased from 6 to 8.5 so if you played against the pack out so you know its accuracy is very very high almost laser beam like so a slight nerf here to the auto fire scatter but to compensate for this the barrage recharges are going down on all of its barrages by 10 seconds so overall this may even be a little bit of a buff to the pack out so be like less accurate in auto fire but you know if your opponent's good they'll already be dodging so you can't really rely on dodging <laughs> against 8.5 scatter anyway and the barrage recharge is going down so 
This may actually end up being a buff for the, for the pack out, so honestly. So checking out the revised scatter on the pack out to autofy here. This is uh, close to max range of the pack out, so it should be close to maximum scatter in terms of the auto fire. Well, every shot so far is at least connected, at least done grazing damage to the squad. Okay, so that's the first major miss. That one's way off target. And there we go, another one way off target. So it took us, what, like four shots, and then we got two pretty big misses after that. And then another big miss. So I guess we just ran super good for those first four shots all landing. Next three have been pretty rubbish. <laughs> okay, well, uh, so that scatter nerf does look to be pretty, pretty decent, man, this is <laughs> just going poorly, so yeah, I mean, looks like you can still run good, you know, you can still shoot like four shots in a row that all connect, but after that you can like fail to hit multiple times in a row, so yeah, certainly seems to be a pretty decent nerf on the pack out uh, scatter of the uh, auto fire so i wanted to test the pack outs of firing into the fog of war against the squad using the attack ground command this is a pretty common use case scenario for it if you've lost sight of your enemy can't rely on spotters of your sight should be a squad like right here there we go drop target in that maybe around there three models around here should be best <laughs> Oof. So yeah, firing into the fog usually does result in higher scatter for a direct fire. Oh, there we go. That was a pretty good hit. Two models down. Oh, another pretty good hit. All right. Crazy damage. There we go. So that seemed to actually happen a lot more quickly than just leaving it on auto fire. I don't know if there's some bonus from using attack ground, but surely that should have been offset by uh, firing into the fog. There we go. Another huge scatter. Maybe we just ran really good. But yeah, it does seem like attack grounding into the fog will still be a viable tactic with the pack out. So. The M21 mortar half track, the white phosphorus shells barrage is being nerfed. The damage over time frequency tick rate is going from 0.2 to 0.5 so we'll be doing significantly less damage over time this one uh, this more half track was terrorizing team games very very strong just continuously laying down white phosphorus so it's uh, being nerfed this is aimed at team games very team game oriented change so i'm going to test the white phosphorus barrage damage over time change here i'm going to hit this cluster of squads with a white phosphorus barrage on the mortar half track. It looks like this squad crawled a little bit. They might have got out of the danger zone a little bit. It looks like this one took a direct hit. Three shells coming down there. It looks like this one took a direct hit. The other ones, quite a few models standing out of the damage, but their health does seem to be ticking down uh, more slowly than previously as you would expect with this change and uh, at the end of the barrage the squad is still decently healthy it's still like a little bit under quarter health here so looks like it's not going to send the squad right down to like absolute zero health where they would die to a stiff breeze they're still going to have a little bit of extra health remaining at the end of a white phosphorus barrage from the more half track
the Sherman Bulldozer. This is the one in Armour Company. It's going behind tech now, similar to all other coolant tanks. Now it requires major tech, but the command point requirement is going down from 10 to 6. We should be able to call it in earlier. It's probably honestly could have just been built from tech. Don't know if it needs to be a call in honestly, but it's you know kind of being standardized like other call in tanks. And it is almost like a heavy tank in terms of durability, so I suppose that's all right. The M26 Pershing is receiving quite a lot of changes, similar to other call in heavy tanks. It requires far stage of tech, in this case the major, to be able to call it in. Command point requirements going down <laughs> from 13 to 9 they got this round the wrong way this is so you know in team games where command points accelerate much more slowly compared to 1v1s just to be able to call it in a similar timing to 1v1s armor is going down from 300 to 270 but to compensate for this health is going up from 800 to 960 so the panther went through a similar change to this uh, a while ago However, that came out significantly worse off because that went from 320 armor to 265. So the Pershing is coming out much better for the same health to armor ex exchange. So it's going to be more durable, especially in team games where a lot of players had a lot of trouble keeping alive against things like, you know, like the elephant and whatnot, or when there's just like a million tank destroyers on the map. Having this health to armor exchange should Help you keep the Pershing alive in those team game scenarios and just overall I'd say that this is a buff to the Pershing a lot of people see like a, <laughs> a decrease in armor but this is like a buff to its survivability overall for sure and then it's receiving changes similar to other heavy tanks where the near damage is going down but the far is going up already has super tight scatter on the Pershing so it didn't need a scatter change similar to most other heavy tanks also a slight nerf here the VET3 reload bonus is going from 50% to 30%. Most other tanks in the game do have around 20 to 30%. So this is more of like a normalization on the VET3 bonus here for the Pershing. And also a buff here to the high velocity armor piercing shot. It's going down in cost from 90 to 50 munitions. Now that the double tap potential is being removed from it. Kind of wasn't seeing much play at all because it's so expensive. So now at 50 munitions, it should be worth going for that high velocity armor piercing shot again. So testing the revised Pershing against a Fox Grenadier squad long range here. Oof. Oh, that was a good start. Looks like the machine guns were still in range for a couple of tickles there. Second shot, not quite so powerful. I'll model down. Light MGs now so pretty good line. overall. I'd say maybe like marginally better than the Tiger, but not much in it, honestly. Now the Pershing against a clumped up squad close range. So I'll still be able to wipe them uh, pretty easily there. Time on target. This is the off-map strike in the infantry commander. The final three shells of the barrage will no longer scatter. This is to guarantee a kill on a howitzer. Because previously, it was around a 25% chance that time on target wouldn't kill a howitzer. And this is one of its main functions. So now it will guarantee kill a howitzer with this change. Rifle company is being buffed. We already saw the flares earlier getting a slight munitions cost decrease but on top of that fire up the ability exhaustion debuff is being removed so they used to move slowly for a period after they used the sprint of fire up that's being just outright removed and the flares have been merged with the flamethrower slot ability is now called advanced infantry equipment so flares and flamethrowers being merged and then rifleman field defenses have been added to the doctrine this is the one that lets you build sandbags, mines, and whatnot with your riflemen. On top of that, rifleman field defense is being buffed. The speed at which you plant mines is being greatly increased. They used to take a very long time. And I believe this means that they will now take half as long. Twice as many of the riflemen will be involved in the planting. So I believe it does half the build time on that. And we saw in the balance invitational 
that this change was huge. Nagano was spamming mines like crazy, or Nico, excuse me, Nico was spamming mines like crazy. So this change actually may be slightly too strong at the moment. So just a quick demo of how quickly rifle and plant a mine. We'll start one with them, and then we'll start one with the combat engineers as well. A wee bit of a race. Combat engineers did have a little bit of a penalty. They started a little bit later, but it looks like riflemen are at least on par with combat engineers in terms of building mines. So those mines are going to come up really quickly if you've got like three squads of riflemen all across the map. Paratroopers slash paratrooper support squads are undergoing a few minor changes here. Their timed demolition charges are now guaranteed to destroy de crewed or abandoned team weapons, so that's a nice change. Didn't see too much of the timed demolition charges, but maybe now with this change, you might see them used to deny team weapons occasionally. Their target size is going down from 1 to 0 0.95, so this should make them a little bit less vulnerable against small arms fire straight out of the bat, like at Vet Zero. Their small arms performance should be slightly better. However, that buff is being removed from the variancy at VET3. So their VET3 firepower should be exactly the same, but they should be a little bit stronger straight out of the gate. A special thank you goes out to all my Patreon backers who make these more in-depth videos possible.